much about Fabio. What you remember from all that? Or how did that? How did Fabio start? I was just wondering who did buy Fabio. Hmm. Do we have any idea? I, my first encounter with Fabio was in the restroom, where he was hiding in a stall, waiting for me. Um, I closed the door, and there he was. I didn't expect to see Fabio there, but after a while, I got used to him, and I was sad when he was gone. I think. Oh yeah, I think he inspired our Jeff Goldblum watching us in the bathroom too. Probably. I think he was. Yeah. He was You're swiveling is making me. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, he was behind Keep the, that. He was behind the blind, <laughs> behind the blinds, peeking through. We had like the blinds slightly open, so you can see some eyes peeking through. He was behind the blinds with the blinds slightly open. There was one where he was behind the blinds, but with his head all the way through, so it looked like he was actually sticking his head out of the blinds. My favorite one, far and away, though, was the time we taped him to the outside of the window. I think it was Hayden's office. I feel like it yeah, was Hayden. Hayden. Yeah. And he reached to grab him, or whoever's office was, reached to pull him off the window and realized, clonk, that he was on the other side of the window. And it was that moment of like, Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to walk through the woods. And the best part was, it was recently, we had seen a bobcat in the woods. So whoever it was had to go out and brave the wild to try and get Fabio off the window. A wild man eating bobcat. <laughs> like this it was small. I thought it was a house cat at first. Try to attack him. Oh, like, wait, that's not a house cat. So, yeah, it's a, it is funny after weeks of Fabio. And, seeing him every day, it would still startle me when, when I just would walk into the bathroom and I wasn't expecting it to move. So it was kind of like, kind of before the elf on a shelf craze. It was yeah, like it was, Fabio. He was the free elf. <laughs> he was like, he would move around the office and nobody He would show up before Christmas Eve, but then just never leave. It's fun every day. Fabio just stayed. Like, oh, I wonder where he's at today. Like, poking his head around a corner or... Like, I feel like he started to get, uh, like, defaced. He did. And vandalized. So I think it started time, when it was like... Even scarier because he'd be like a deteriorating puppy. <laughs> Didn't somebody give him like bloody, you know, like bloody eyes and a mustache? And sorry, Fabio, if you're out there watching this, it's nothing personal. It's just. But if you are watching this, please retweet it. <laughs> Battlechasers.com. It was, it was <laughs> definitely the, the best part. Fabio, hashtag rules. The best part was towards the end. Dave's growing irritation with it, and. I think that actually inspired more and more Fabio pranks. And he would get moved out of Dave's office, but then moved back in. And that's how, I think, that is when I think Dave took matters into his own hands. And we discovered him headless. And it was Fabio, not Dave. Heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> Fabio was later. Yeah, headless Fabio came after headless Dave. He figured rather than, rather than taking Fabio out, I should just take my own life and cut his head off. <laughs> We heard the, hear the final edict of Fabio was him in a parking garage. And then a bench. Is there. that right? I don't remember whatever happened. I don't remember what happened to Fabio, actually. That my, my last recollection of him was this. Is. No. He went out William Wallace style, torn to pieces and headless, and spread around the office. Disemboweled. <laughs> Disemboweled. <laughs> the yep. cardboard was everywhere. That was Fabio. It was Fabio. We heard that he was left on a bench, and uh, you guys just all walked past him and vigil had shut down. Lucky he didn't, he just stayed there. <laughs> Nobody knows if he's still there or not. No, Fabio was the second vigil office. Fabio wasn't the third vigil yeah, office. Fabio, was, Fabio vigil was long office. dead and buried long before the third vigil office. So that we had three offices. That was the second one. The third one. The third one was sadly prank free. Maybe that's why THQ died. We didn't have pranks <laughs> at the third visual office. Did we do any? Because the, the second office had... The first office was pretty tame. We did some wall running. I put a hole in the yeah. wall trying to do a vertical wall run. That was a mistake. The horizontal wall runs were a lot more successful at all the offices. Marvin put a hole in the wall when he got up from his desk oh. at the second office and tripped and fell and hit his knee on the wall. And so he just moved one of his posters down, like a foot off the floor, to cover the hole in the wall. It was probably there when we moved out. Uh, yeah, I think we found it when, when we were taking everything down. <laughs> he tripped on one of the, the, the wooden practice swords. <laughs> That's right. That the animators would swing around like it was good reference. I'm going to make a Horseman of the Apocalypse sword swing. We had those cool beams on the second story balcony that looked down to the first floor that Josh Coons tried to be cool and climb across and then his foot went through the sheetrock. 
then it's <laughs> like a hole up. No, then his ass did too, right? He sat on it. Oh, it like, they, there were yeah. two holes. I know he like two made a big yeah. dent that could not possibly have gotten there any other way other than someone crawling out onto it. Over the, over the railing, out onto this giant, yeah. Sheetrock beam that went out. The drop was like 15 feet, and it would yeah. have been onto granite tiles. Second tile. story, yeah. Yeah, second story down onto the first story. Whoever fell would have been dead for Where sure. Where did we like have that cool concert on the rooftop, the parking garage? That was at the second office. That was the second, second one. Yeah. back to Josh crawling out onto those <laughs> beams. He was trying to get something, right? Somebody had thrown something out because there was there was a series of beams that went out and there was another one that ran parallel yeah. to the walkway. Yeah, we were like, why are you throwing stuff Somebody had thrown something out there and got stuck. There. And then people started throwing a bunch of stuff. You're right, to try to knock it down so then that more and more stuff got stuck. <laughs> stuff and someone threw like their car keys or a wallet. Something important. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> when Josh went out there to get it, put a hole in it. And then, even after being nearly killed in his yoga ball dueling incident with his brother, <coughs> where he tore his knee ligament, yeah, and had to limp for the next three months. That I dared them to do. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yep, I remember. That. I didn't want to do it, but I wanted. I dared them to do it. The best part about that was they went running down the hallway and they crashed together. And then I think Josh was the one who went flying. And they were fine, but as he was getting up, his brother came up and hit him again while he was standing he up. Flew, like he legit flew back. Like, but that wasn't when he tore his knee ligament. That's the best part. He stood up and got sucker punched by his brother again, who hit him again as he was standing up, and that's when he tore his knee ligament. What's the statute of limitation on lawsuits? <laughs> Are they going to sue the, the THQ, Old whatever, <laughs> the bankruptcy estate, get some money for it? I think my favorite one was probably Hayden's Winter Wonderland, where we bought the giant inflatable snowman and uh, filled it up, put fake snow everywhere, and then put the uh, tape recorder playing Christmas music in the ceiling. That was definitely the most expensive one. Wow, it's pretty light. Yeah. Do that. Look the stuff on the floor. I think just the price of the big inflatable, it was eight or nine feet, eight or nine foot Went to the inflatable ceiling. snowman. It was loud too. That motor to blow up that huge guy. Yeah. But it was it, cool going in the office to talk to him after that. I always <laughs> felt really happy. It's like Christmas time. No, but the most ambitious one that was lame was the balloon one because we wanted to fill this office. Wanted to, we did. we did. We did, right. And so multiple people would take shifts going in there blowing up balloons it took like an entire day which i'm sure a lot of people yeah. and the entire door was like like you could barely close the door without them spilling out it was just full like floor to ceiling brilliantly done and then when he came in on monday someone had come in and got rid of them all they were completely gone and no one would fess up to it no we, we figured out who did it no, it was it was nash what yeah why i what a punk move now Come on, that was one of the greatest pranks we ever had. But the reason we talk about it is because he popped all the balloons. He popped he them all up. There Vacuumed it up. We only knew that there was any trace because he missed a few pieces of some of the balloons had like paper, not glitter, but like the confetti in them. And there was a little bit of confetti and like one or two shards of torn up balloons in the So corners. much work went into that. How yep. lame. One man undid it all. Mm -hmm. What were some of the other pranks? Oh, well, my personal favorite was my prank when I was out for, or the prank pulled on me when I was out for a week when my first kid was born, Caden, one of the developer babies on Darksiders 1, who has a credit in Moby Games. He's officially a game developer as far as Moby Games is concerned. When I came back after my week of paternity leave, it's paternity, right? Yeah. Yeah. I walked into my office and the whole floor of the office was covered in those like foam letters that you connect. 
and <laughs> guys had taken diapers, suspended them from the drop ceiling, and poured apple juice in them. Some had apple, <laughs> some juice, had apple juice, some had like, melted, melted candy bars, <laughs> melted nuts, Snickers, yeah, yeah Hershey was. bars, Crunch bars, and it was nasty. Like these were very, very convincing diapers. Kids toys everywhere, like the mobiles or whatever they are, the things you wind up and. We got a lot of great kids' toys out of it, first of all. But the best part was lots of leaving those diapers up because I didn't take them down. So if somebody had came in with a very serious question about, you know, the, the design or the level design of Darksiders One, they had to stand with a poopy diaper right here. Hey, yeah, uh, yeah, we have a problem with, and the diaper would be rotating slightly. <laughs> air con the air conditioning would be blowing it around every so slightly in the breeze. I remember when I eventually took those down. I think they probably just disintegrated and fell down because I don't remember ever removing them. Who got the tinfoil? Everything wrapped in tinfoil. Pens. I feel like now it's Hayden too. Notebooks. No, who was that? Notepads, every, literally everything. Is thought, monitor, yeah. keyboard, the mouse. Was I perhaps. thought that was Hayden also. I think I did that one. Yeah. I think I was in on that one. I think that was Hayden or Marvin. Tim Bell, he had that picture he hated and we put it like we were photoshopped his photos he had up in his room of him and his wife and like replaced the faces with them. We also put a giant version of that picture on the outside so he'd have to go into the woods to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. also. You were infamous for not letting anybody touch your massive collection of toys on your desk. Think of models. Yeah, 80% of Steve's office was toys. Collectible figures. Collectible toys. <laughs> toys. And very fancy, very expensive. You weren't even allowed to touch them to rotate them. Even jokingly, you could see kind of, you could see his face turn a little bit red. <laughs> touch my toys. So since we weren't allowed to prank, he, he made it very clear that one rule was, if you're going to prank my office, do not touch my toys, don't move them. Don't put your fingerprints on them. Sorry, don't touch my statues. So we were like, okay, we have to do something around them. So Brad and myself went, and we actually went to every store we could find, because there weren't that many. We bought bags of army figures, like the cheapest toys we could. And with surgical precision, we completely obliterated his desk so that we didn't touch a single to statue. <laughs> we just put army men everywhere, all around the toys, all around his desk, tucked him, because you sat right next to the blinds, we tucked him into the blinds. Yep, they were so there was a army wall of army men climbing up the blinds on top of his, on top of his shelving. We should have bought replicas of his existing toys then, like broke them. <laughs> right? That'd be cool. You're much more creative. Wait, I just remembered the, the, the Lichner one. What did he oh, order? Like the scanner the or the, the Cintiq, Cintiq or something? <laughs> that was. The Cintiq. Yeah, I don't even know if we could do the story justice. Got to know the guy, but our, our director at the time, Christian Lichner, who also, also was later the art director on um, Diablo 3, uh, he had ordered a Cintiq and they were super expensive. Not many people had them back then, I don't think. Uh, and he was like waiting. We never even like, heard of a Cintiq. Delays. Like he was a like a monitor you can draw. He was so hell? paranoid. He's like, hey, did it come? It might be delivered today or tomorrow. He was like constantly getting updates. Like he was freaking out about when it would get here. So <clears throat> luckily it arrived when he wasn't there. And we took, we took the Cintiq out very carefully and placed it somewhere. And we filled the box with like printer paper or something like that. And, and we, we just put, like waited for him to open it. Yeah, the, the real, but, the real coup de grace at all was that I had a Wacom that I had taken because oh, it would right. replace their crappy little Wacoms with nice bigger Wacoms. I just adopted one and I would use it just to kind of play around with on my desk. And whenever he would come into to my office, he would talk about how it was the worst Wacom in the world. It offended him that anybody still yeah. used it. It was disgusting to him. I was less of a human for even having it on my desk because it was so small and terrible. And uh, so you know, fast forward a few months and yeah, when we pulled the Cintiq out, which was probably like three or four grand at the time, and put the printer paper in, I just dropped my crappy Wacom that he hated so much on top of the printer paper. And I, the easiest way I can think of to make the long story short is that when, when the Cintiq was, we put it back where it had been dropped by the delivery guy, and he refused to bring it back into his office. He saw it there, and we're starting to drive us crazy. And we're like, aren't you gonna open your package? Like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later. And we're like, ah, oh, I want him to discover it. He finally picked it up and he lifted it up and he took it back and he heard everything shift. And we saw this look of fear on his face. And what we didn't know was, was he had gone through this nightmare with the group that he had bought the Cintiq from because they wouldn't ship it and they kept, they, he, he thought it was, he thought he had been scammed out of his money. He thought he was never going to see it. Uh, so when it got, it was a big, when he got it, it was a big relief to him. And then he took it back into his office and he opened it up 
and he saw the printer paper, and nobody was in his office when he opened it up, and he went ballistic, and he started screaming and yelling and hollering, and he thought he had been scammed. He, th he just thought the he had been The funniest part scam. is we thought that he was going to come out and be like, very funny, guys, where's my Cintiq? But he actually thought that they filled the box with a Wacom tablet and printer paper. And he was like freaking out about this place, ripping them off. And that made it even funnier to us because he didn't even suspect that we had taken it out of the box. Mm -hmm. And then he, so good. I even went back there at one point and said, doesn't that Wacom look familiar? You're like, that. you have the same printer paper as us, that's weird. One of them was open. <laughs> yeah. he, he was in, in such a rage that nothing, like nothing was registering to him at that point. <laughs> Even when I pointed out that the Wacom was off, suspiciously like the one, the one, the one that was sitting on my desk that he hated so much, he was like, "Can't you see? I've been ripped off." <laughs> <laughs> it was. I wish we had recorded it because there were, we absolutely did not expect the prank to go off as well. He was. We were in the office next door, you know, containing raging laughter as he was in there, <laughs> stomping around, hollering. It was so good. It was like the best reaction to a prank I've ever seen. Bar none. It was so good. We love you, Chris. So we heard you through you wall run and through tortillas of people. <laughs> In slow motion, like uh, <laughs> Matrix style, I would like flip through the air and through. Because we, we would have like cater in like food and like sometimes it wouldn't get cleaned up and those the tortillas would become like hard drawn like, discs. <laughs> yeah, and we would like throw them like, I wonder if I can stick this in the wall or whatever. And we would just like throw them at each other. I'm sure a few people have gotten hit by them. Pretty much, yeah, more than a few. Yeah. But wall running was my thing. I was pretty good at it. I could do maybe like four or five steps, maybe. This is my record. On the floor. Maybe I think we need to go out, I think we need to go outside under one of the brick walls and verify this <laughs> four to five steps. And then forward. Ryan tried it. And that was early. Like one step through the wall. <laughs> Again, that was vertical. Let me see your vertical wall run. You can probably yeah. do a, yeah. Yeah. Start. Drywall, sheetrock, not really made for vertical wall running, I guess. so tall, though. Where would you go? <laughs> That's true. I don't know.